Hey, my name is Charles, and we're here with this RV that we have for sale. It's the Coachman Spirit 2758 RV. Now, the 2758, the way the Coachman did these numbers is the 27 simply refers to the length of the box, and the 58 refers to the weight that the engineers planned the vehicle would weigh in hundreds of pounds. So they anticipated that it was going to weigh 5,800 pounds. Turns out that they actually weigh right at 6,000 pounds dry. So the current model years call them a 2760, although there's been no changes at all. The RB simply refers to the fact that the bathroom uh, is in the back of the unit. So we're going to start at the front. I'm going to show you a few things. First, you do have an automatic LCI jack here. It includes a light, so at night, you can hit that on and you can help see what you're doing to unhook your, your tow vehicle. You also have two 20 pound propane bottles in here. You have the lift up so that you can see that you have the automatic transfer valve. So you normally, when you're camping, you're gonna open both of these valves, leave them open, point this to whichever canister you wanna use first. When it runs out, it's automatically gonna switch over to the other, but this one's gonna turn red. So all you need to do then at that point is lift the cover off and take out the tank that's pointed red. Flip it back over and you're still camping. So when the propane runs out in the middle of the night, you won't know it, it'll automatically switch over. In the morning, you come out and check that valve. If it's red, it's time to either exchange a bottle, which you can do with the 20 pound, you can't do that with a 30 pound, or you can just have the, 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 the bottle refilled at most any of your campgrounds. So we upgraded also to two 12 volt batteries. What that's gonna do for you is it's gonna increase the total number of amp hours that you have available, particularly if you're gonna dry camp or if you're gonna boondock. You know, let's say you're, you're taking a long trip, you wanna stop in a rest area somewhere um, and just spend the night there, get a little bit of sleep. You'll be just fine with two batteries. You can actually dry camp all weekend long, no problem. Got a battery disconnect switch there. It's the red box. You wanna always make sure you turn that off whenever you're storing the RV. A lot of the new RVs these days are not coming with those. They want you to manually disconnect the battery. We didn't want to do that, so we added the battery disconnect. So come on around here and we'll start at this end. So you've got your marker light here. All of the locks on this RV um, are RV locks uh, key to like. I have the old locks, so you can go with either way you want. I'll give them to you in a box and you can decide. Uh, but the standard locks that come on here, everybody that buys a travel trailer has the same exact key. Anybody in the campground can open up your unit. If you change the locks to the RV lock, you don't have that, you don't have that problem. You've got a magnetic stop up here that keeps that locked up. And as soon as we open the compartment, a motion activated light comes on. In addition, you have a light switch here that if you flip that on, as you come in in the evening, you can provide additional light forward so that you can see what you're doing as you're working in the front of the coach or if you want a little extra light in the campground uh, for some reason to the front of the coach you can do that so inside here you have complete pass-through storage that goes all the way through underneath the bed the bed also has storage underneath but you also have this handy compartment up here it's a fishing rod lo a locker a gun locker whatever you want to use it for but it is a little bit of space that would have otherwise been wasted that coachman has put that door in place for you it does have solar prep so all you have to do is get the external panel we didn't do that we doubled up the batteries been more than enough for us but if you want to boondock for an extended period of time you can plug your solar panel right into the port here um, and and have additional power You've got the awning extends almost the entire length of, of the vehicle. Uh, it's very important. Some units these days, the awning isn't covering the entry door, and that is terrible. When it's raining at the campground and you need to let the dogs out for a few minutes or whatever, uh, having rain pour down on top of your entry door is, is, a, bad, is a bad thing. Now, this, this coach, we also we upgraded and put a camera system on. You've got side cameras on both sides with IR you also have an entry camera with a motion detector and an IR and I'm gonna show you later on um, probably either in the description or in some stills I'll show you the monitor 
Um, there's a movable monitor that suction cups to your windshield and swings in front of your rearview mirror. Because once you hook up, your rearview mirror is useless. The only thing you're going to see in your rearview mirror is the front of the, the cap of this coach, nothing else. So you swing that camera, that screen to the rearview camera in front of your rearview mirror, it makes it very natural. Your side mirrors still work as always. If you want to use the side cameras, you can. But when you look up as you're driving down the road, you're going to see exactly what it is behind you. It's very, very, very helpful. At night, it's a, it's a wireless device. You just simply unhook that monitor, bring it into the coach with you, set it beside the bed. If there's motion or anything out here, that camera's going to activate and it has a microphone so you can see what's going on um, out here. As we come on down, as I talked about before, the, the RV locks, it's a, it's a keyless entry. Um, there's wireless fobs. Uh, in addition, you can punch in your code and hit lock or unlock and, and never be locked out of the coach. If the batteries go dead, no big deal. There is a key that you can use, um, but they're very energy efficient and the batteries don't go dead very often. This window on most RVs is a, uh, a frosted window that you can never see out. We thought that was a bad idea. So we upgraded it to a tinted window with a pull-down shade um, on the inside so you can see, th see through. These coaches are built with composite boards. It's the Asdell composite board. Um, and what that does is if you have done any research on RVs, you'll see the delamination of this skin is a real problem. The other problem is the way they made them by, by rolling, putting them through a roller press on top of particle board, um, they, they became very heavy. So these are lighter um, and they're, they're more durable and they won't delaminate. So the first big surprise we have is the outdoor kitchen. So in the outdoor kitchen, we have um, a refrigerator. It's a 110 electric only refrigerator. So it's only gonna work uh, when, when you're on hookups. You have a sink, drawers, cabinets, bottle opener, and a cooktop. So what we do with this cooktop a lot of times is we have a cast iron griddle that we will sit on here and, and use to do flat grilling outside. But you're not limited to that. Obviously, you can use it just as a regular cooktop. But you also have um, you also have propane quick connect right through here underneath the trailer that will allow you to hook up your regular propane gas grill and use it right out here as part of your of your kitchen. This is the back side of your refrigerator, but right here you have the cable TV hookup. This is not an input. This is an output. So we place a folding table right here to expand the area of the kitchen and a TV. We hook the TV up to the cable there and so and the, the electricity right here and you've got an outdoor TV. It's easy, it's underneath the awning, very easy to enjoy. The um, two speakers up here, those are both part of the whole coach stereo system and the TV system is actually wired into that. So you can listen to the TV through those speakers, both inside and outside, if that's what you want. The tires on this unit, if you've done any research, you've probably heard about the China Bombs. These are not China Bombs. These are new Goodyear Endurance tires with reinforced sidewalls. Arguably the best that, that you can buy uh, right now. That's your, your furnace exhaust. As we come on back around here. And we have a little, a little pet hook yes, here so you thanks, can Amy, hook I your... forgot. So this tie down here, and it, it's, it's becoming more and more common, it is anchored to the coach, but it's, it's for a leash. So you can, you can hook Rover up uh, right there and they can run around uh, and enjoy the outdoors with you, but you don't have to chase them around. Most RV parks now are not allowing pet fences uh, anymore. You've got your, uh, your, your sewer storage uh, bumper here, but these, instead of being thin plastic, they're actually rubberized, so they actually stay in there and won't come out rolling down the, down the highway. As we come on over to the other side, we'll look at the hookups real quick. So you've got your spray port here. It's a quick connect nozzle. So instead of one of those silly, flimsy outdoor showers that hardly ever work, 
um, that they're routinely they'll freeze. There'll be a little bit of water left in them. Um, they're difficult to uh, they're, they're difficult to maintain. This is not. This gives you a sprayer port, and you've actually got a, a coiled slinky uh, hose that you can use to clean off rover or clean up your hands after you've been over here working on this stuff. You got your city water connection, but also a black tank flush. So a lot of times in the ultralight lines of, of, of RVs, you're not going to have a black tank flush. Trust me, you want a black tank flush. <laughs> That's going to spray water all inside your black tank, all down the sides. There are little spray nozzles in there and run it right out the hose so that it cleans the black tank for you. Got a six gallon hot water heater. It's electric and propane. You can use it on either mode, just electric or just propane, or what we do, and I know a lot of people that have done this for a while do, and it's totally okay in the manual for this model of water heater. Leave it on electric, but when you go to shower, flip on the gas. It cuts the recovery time in half. So adults can take two regular back-to-back -back full length showers in this RV and not run out of hot water. Got your 30 amp power service, and then two different coax connections. You've got one for park cable and one for satellite. And there are two different outputs inside the coach. So if you go to a park that's got free cable and you wanna also set up your, uh, your freestanding satellite dish, you, you can do that. And all you have to do is switch inputs inside. Um, it also gives you a way to connect a Wi-Fi Ranger um, or a cell phone ranger if you have one without using up um, your, your cable input to your coach. Very, very advantageous. We also opted to add uh, slide toppers. Uh, if you don't, if they don't come this way from the factory. If you don't wanna have to climb up on a ladder uh, to the top of your coach after camping at pretty much every site and get the leaves and debris off the top of that thing, you'll want a slide topper. If you don't take them off, and you put the slide in, whatever was on top of the slide is gonna wind up inside the coach um, once you bring the slide in. So you definitely want slide toppers. This one already has it. So we'll come on around this way. We're gonna go inside. Got your standard fold down stairs, door latch. So as soon as you come in here to the right, as soon as you come up, there's your control panel. So you can instantly turn on the lights, you can extend the awning, you can extend the slide. Everything can be done right here from where you enter the, the coach. This, in most coaches this size, this would be a jackknife sofa. It is not, it is a full trifold sofa. So you have a bed that will extend all the way out to here and you can comfortably sleep two full grown individuals inside or, or on top of the trifold sofa. Lots of nice big windows. The, the dinette is a U-shaped dinette which expands your seating a little bit. It can be converted into a bed. Like most of these, the, 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 the tabletop simply drops down, the cushions reconfigure and it makes a flat sleeping surface. Not big enough for a, a, a full-size adult, but perfect for children um, uh, uh, that, that, you know, are, are in, the, in, the, in the less than, than five and a half feet height range. Uh, underneath the dinette, you do have storage that you can access both through the door and from under the kitchen, uh, from underneath the cushion. So you can, you can do both. And there's storage all the way around under there. In the kitchen, well, first, you do have the flat screen TV. It is on an articulating arm. And as I mentioned before, it is connected to the stereo. That's not true in most of these units. And it becomes very difficult to hear uh, the television uh, when the air conditioner is on. All of your hookups are located right here, so you've got extra power, and both of those coax cable um, outputs from the other side of the coach come to right here. Additional storage up top. There's slide behind storage behind the TV. 
It gives you sort of a, a hidden cubby hole, if you will, to hide different items. There's the RV AC silencer, which we'll tell you about in a second. So to come on over, it's a Dometic refrigerator. It, it runs on both uh, uh, 110 electric or gas. So that's what we call a two-way fridge freezer. It's not a three-way, it doesn't, doesn't run on 12 volts. Most of those don't actually work very well, um, but this one's got the, got the two-way, it, it can work, work either way. Got your on-off switch, and then you can force it to gas mode, or you can leave it on auto mode, and it'll automatically determine, it'll say, hey, I'm hooked up to shore power, I don't need to use any propane, I'll just use the shore power. Once the shore power gets disconnected, for whatever reason, the refrigerator knows that it's lost shore power and it'll automatically go into propane gas mode and keep your, your food cool. So for a coach this size, this is a pretty decent size refrigerator and freezer space. Um, the shelves can be adjusted both in the door and inside um, the, the refrigerator. I know a lot of people have talked about um, how long it takes them to get their fridge and freezer cold. We've never had any problem with really basically just a couple of hours hooked up to shore power here at the house or turned on propane, and it's cold enough to go ahead and load, load food. Uh, in here you have your, your microwave oven, your hood that does vent to outside, your Furion uh, uh, range top with the flip back glass, as well as- And that's a three burner. An oven, yes, this is a three burner. Um, a lot of them are only two. Um, but you also have the oven and I know a lot of people have said, well, you know, I'm not going to use the oven when I camp. Amy can tell you, she cooks all kinds of great things in this oven and it's actually, um, very even with its heating. It, it really, yeah. really is. So we've added the, the subway, uh, tile backsplash. If you don't like this, it's not a big deal. It'd be very easy to remove it and you'd be back to the same, same color wall that that's behind it. Um, a little bit of heat from a hair dryer and just it'll, it'll, it'll come right off if you, if you peel it back. Two cutting boards as part of your sink covers and a double sink. This is really important uh, in an RV if you don't have uh, a dishwasher, which you're not going to see in a travel trailer this size. So you really need to be able to keep that stuff separate. You've got a pull down spray nozzle and a residential uh, style, style faucet here. Lots of storage, long, long, deep drawers, and cabinets on both sides, so the full corner space is available uh, for you to store. The space up top, it's very well made. If you look at the back of these, these doors, very thick with the sealant and the caulking for that, that piece of glass. Um, check that on any other RV you look at, and you'll find that oftentimes it's, it's fairly, fairly thin. We've got a full pantry's worth of storage here. Upper and lower. And then in the bathroom, this is the great thing. Normally in a travel trailer this size, if you're a big guy, uh, you're not going to be able to take a real shower. Here, you're going to be able to. Look at this thing. It's 50, it's 50 inches long. I am a fraction of an inch underneath six feet tall. And I still, under the skylight, have that much room. Not under the skylight, I have that much room. You've got a residential style uh, shower head that's adjustable. It's not one of those tiny plastic things that barely spits the water out. If you set this thing wide open, it'll give you a, a, a real shower. <clears throat> and a seat. And a seat. And the ladies like that in particular for shaving legs and whatever. <laughs> uh, in this RV, you have two fantastic vents. So one back here and one at the front of the unit. Those are controlled by remote. So for people that are, uh, that are vertically challenged, they don't have to climb up on anything to <laughs> like me. use that, that little opener. Um, and there's a thermostat on each one of those fantastic vents. So you can set that thermostat to whatever temperature you want the vent to cut on at. So if you take the front vent and blow it in, which the bands are reversible, and the rear vent and blow it out and set the thermostats, you'll be amazed at how cool you can keep this unit just on 12 volt power when you're boondocking. It's really great. Lots of storage in this bathroom. 
the cabinet is very deep. Very deep. deep. Let's see if I can get in there. There we go. Motion sensitive light. So at night, you've got a motion sensitive light here in the kitchen, I mean in the bathroom, that as, as you walk in, it's going to turn on and give just enough light without disturbing everyone else so that you can see and you know, what you're doing. There's big storage and a hamper underneath on the bottom. So it's got a pull out hamper that you can take off, which I did. Um, and then another big deep storage cabinet. All right, so now we will and go. Vanity. Yep, there's the. Big vanity storage. For an RV this size, that is pretty hefty as far as storage is concerned. And then there's a little storage underneath as well on the top part of the cabinet. Speakers mounted above. And the RV AC silencer. So if you've been in some of these RVs, when that AC cuts on, it's loud. You're not, you can't hardly hear the TV anymore. You have to raise your voice to speak to anyone. Those things, you can look them up online, but they cut uh, the amount of noise from the, the RV AC by probably 50%. Um, and this is a 15,000 BTU unit. A lot of times in a, in a trailer this size, you're only gonna get a 13.5. We've been all the way down at, in Orlando, Florida in the summertime and you, it, it'll, it'll run you out of here. It's, it'll, it'll cool it off so well. So back here in the bedroom. All right, we have a standard size queen bed as opposed to an RV queen, which would be about this yeah, This much. is a real 60 by 80 queen. Yep, so you can put a standard queen mattress topper on here, which is what we had done. Um, and it, it, it sleeps just like, like a regular bed for people that think, well, maybe I want, you know, a king bed instead one, it's going to be very difficult to do that. in this size, um, of an RV that you can pull behind a light truck or an SUV. And the second thing is that having these sides here, believe it or not, greatly expands the sleeping area of the bed. Normally you wouldn't sleep all the way over on one side or roll all the way over, but with this here, um, we actually have more space between us here than we do in our regular queen in the house. You've got individual controllable lights here and speakers up top. And a shelf that you can put a book or pop your cell phone or whatever. Yeah, very deep storage. Yes. Both above and in these wardrobes. They go all the way back to the cap gives you a lot of room you've got his and her outlets on each side of the bed along with usb charging ports and then on this side of the bed there is a little pull down doggy uh, food and water bowl which we didn't use but it is neat and also we opted for the television in the bedroom um, so it's also connected to the cable system in the RV. It's on an articulating arm and you can adjust it um, however you'd like. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send us a message. Um, it's, this is on Facebook Marketplace um, and it's on rvtrader.com. I don't think it's going to last very long uh, with the, the market the way that it is right now. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, send us a message and we'll do our very best to get them answered for you. Thanks.